The ultimate and tough luck teams in the 2013 NFL season has to be the Arizona Cardinals. They were the only team to beat the Seattle Seahawks at Quest Field this past season. They won 10 games and yet still found a way to not make the playoffs. Again, a tough luck team. And what a head coaching job Bruce Arians did and what a good job the Arizona Cardinals players did after a rough start early on in the season, really turning it on in the second half and becoming one of the more feared teams in the National Football League. So, of course, a lot of people are assuming, you know, bigger things for the Arizona Cardinals in 2014 and that, you know, they could be a playoff team next year, maybe do some damage in the playoffs. But it kind of, what happened with last season, I think, puts the Arizona Cardinals in a bit of a sticky situation. What I mean is, is there's this immediate need to keep up with the Joneses in their own division, like the Seahawks and the 49ers. But on the flip side of that, there's also that need to prepare for the long haul, namely with a starting quarterback. So, you know, the Cardinals have to kind of make a conscientious decision as an organization. Are we really that close? Are we really that good? Do we need to prepare for the future or do we need to prepare for the here and now first? That's the ultimate question that the Arizona Cardinals had to determine as an organization for the 2014 NFL Draft. And when you look at the results for the Cardinals draft in the description box down below, it makes you feel like they felt more of a need to keep up with the Joneses, that they thought that Carson Palmer could have another good season as a starting quarterback in the National Football League, and they feel that they're a playoff team right now that can contend with the St. Louis, or excuse me, Seattle Seahawks and San Francisco 49ers, and that they also needed to do something to make sure they cut the St. Louis Rams in the rear view mirror. Based off of the approach of this draft, that's kind of what you see, is it's a more of a focus on the now. Not saying that they got bad players, but again, it was a little more of a focus on the here and now. Not so much maybe preparing for two, three, four years down the road, where if a Seattle and San Francisco starts to come back to the pack a little bit, the Arizona Cardinals maybe position themselves to dominate. When you look at this draft, a lot of people are maybe surprised by a guy like Dayon Buchanan going in the first round at number 27, the safety from Washington State. I still think that was the best pick for the Arizona Cardinals. Now, would that maybe have been the guy that I would have chosen for the Arizona Cardinals in round number one? No. But I also get why they did it. They're in a division where the 49ers have somebody like Eric Reed and the Seattle well, Seahawks, of course, have both Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas, two of the very best at their positions in all of the National Football League. And the Cardinals are looking at it. You've got Tyron Matthew coming back from ACL injury, and you bring in a day on Buchanan. Now, all of a sudden, along with a Patrick Peterson at corner, you've got a very scary uh, defensive secondary, one that definitely keeps up with the Joneses in the NFC West. So I get the pick here. I don't think it's maybe quite as much of a reach as people might say because when you look at the size, speed, skill set that a Dayon Buchanan has, you know, when you get towards the bottom of round number one, you always see a couple of these picks that jump up and surprise you. And at least I will say this, is the Arizona Cardinals, if this was their guy, they traded back from 20 to 27 and got their guy. At least they didn't sit there and take him at number 20. They knew they could probably get him at 27, and that's exactly what they did, and they picked up some additional picks to move back seven spots in round number one. That's a job well done. In terms of the best value for the Cardinals out of this draft, I think Troy Nicholas, the tight end out of Notre Dame, and again, this was a big need too. You know, I realize for years the Cardinals have kind of taken the tight end position for granted, but in today's NFL, I don't really think you could survive doing that. You have to have a tight end that can do different things. And you look at a guy like a Troy Nicholas, perhaps the most complete all-around tight end in the National Football League, and comes from a program that has been a pipeline in recent years for tight ends to produce at the National Football League level. The guys like the Tyler Eiferts and the Kyle Rudolphs of the world, what have you. This is another guy that kind of fits that mold of a Notre Dame tight end. Nicholas is a really good blocker, and I think he's an underrated athlete as a pass-catching receiver. And again, somebody else that brings another dimension and another weapon to help out Carson Palmer in that Arizona Cardinals offense. A pick that could potentially surprise, and it might not be short-term, it might be years down the road, is Logan Thomas, their fourth-round pick, the quarterback out of Virginia Tech. I love what Mike Mayock said about Logan Thomas. When you saw him a couple years ago, you envisioned what he could be based off of his athletic upside, and you saw a guy that could potentially be talked about as a number one overall pick in the 2013 or 2014 NFL draft. 
Unfortunately, he went to Virginia Tech, so he didn't improve a lot. He didn't get a lot of coaching help at the quarterback position. And he's a very maddening, physical, freak type of prospect that is a very raw quarterback. But you bring him into a system where he can learn behind Carson Palmer, where he can be coached up by a hell of an offensive mind in a Bruce Arians. It's a tremendous situation for a Logan Thomas to be a part of. Again, a guy in a division where you play quarterbacks like Russell Wilson twice a year and Colin Kaepernick twice a year. Now the Arizona Cardinals potentially long term have gotten their answer to a Russell Wilson or a Colin Kaepernick. And a guy, frankly, that has a more intriguing physical set of tools and upside than either Russell Wilson did coming out of Wisconsin or Colin Kaepernick did in 2011 coming out of Nevada. Logan Thomas could be a surprise. It could be a real dark horse out of this draft class. Now, in terms of second-guessing for the Cardinals, I do question a little bit, I will be honest, whether or not it was the best thing to go for needs and go with the, the here and now and pass on quarterbacks like Manziel or Bridgewater or maybe even Derek Carr with that first-round pick. You know, they could have sat, sat there at 20 and taken Manziel or Bridgewater. And if they traded down to 27, they still could have been able to get Bridgewater. I just really wonder if a day on Buchanan is going to end up being a better NFL player than one or both of those quarterbacks that I just named in Manziel or Bridgewater. I was also a little surprised to see them not invest a pick, a high pick, on an outside rusher, a 3-4 outside linebacker. They took Kareem Martin in the third round on a North Carolina. I would assume they're going to want him to bulk up to maybe 285, 290, so that way he could be a more athletic 5 technique, 3-4 defensive end, or if they do some hybrid stuff, he could just play a regular 4-3 end. I was surprised that they didn't target an edge rusher like a guy like a D Ford or a Marcus Smith early on. Now, that surprised me a little bit. Um, in terms of the final grade for this Aaron Cajona Cardinals draft, I gave him an average grade. I gave him a C. You know, because I will say the Buchanan pick does make sense. Maybe it was a little bit of a reach, but it wasn't a tremendous reach. And the thought of him next to Matthew in the back half of that secondary with the Patrick Peterson at corner is a scary thought for teams that are going to have to play the Arizona Cardinals in 2014 and beyond. I think the Nicholas pick made a tremendous amount of sense. Um, I thought that was really good value there, and they got one of the most complete, if not the most complete, tight ends in the entire 2014 NFL draft class. I do ultimately question them not addressing outside linebacker in particular early, and I do question them waiting until the fourth round to address the quarterback position. To me, they're rolling the dice as an organization saying that Carson Palmer is going to give them another one or two years as a decent NFL starting quarterback. I don't know if I would have made that same gamble. That's just me. So as a result, I think the Arizona Cardinals grade out as an average C with this draft. They'll get some help out of this draft class. I expect Buchanan to be a day one starter, Nicholas to be a day one starter. A guy like a John Brown could be a contributor in the special teams area, and he could be a guy that you do different things with to manufacture two, a few touches on the offensive side of the ball. But, again, it's a philosophical thing. Their biggest need on defense to me was an outside linebacker in that 3-4. Their biggest need on offense was a long-term quarterback. They didn't address outside linebacker, and they waited until round four to address the quarterback. Average draft to me for the Cardinals.